So we need to talk about what's happening right now with the leadership of these major AI labs. Because honestly, if you look at the public activity of the biggest CEOs in the space over the last six months, there's a massive, genuinely disturbing trend that almost nobody in the mainstream media is picking up on. I mean, fundamentally, the people building the machines that are supposed to save the world are quietly disappearing. And I don't mean they're taking a vacation, I mean they're physically removing themselves from the public eye because they know something that we don't, or at least they're reacting to a data point that we're just starting to see in the noise. And I want to highlight this clip from Imad Mostak, who, remember, is the guy who basically kickstarted the open source image revolution with Stable Diffusion, because he dropped a comment on a podcast recently that just kind of glossed over people's heads, but if you actually parse what he's saying, it's essentially a warning flare for 2026. So take a listen to what Imad said, and then I'm going to dive into the raw data claims he's making. Because frankly, the timeline he's predicting, unemployment hitting 20% in one to five years, is catastrophic. Let me ask you about the, the job uh, uncertainty, the job losses, all of the disruption that's going to come from that, because you recently warned that the economic uncertainty caused by AI-driven losses will increase social unrest and violence. And of course, you're not alone in uh, predicting this. Uh, Dario Amode, CEO of Anthropic, has raised similar concerns about societal disruption. He stressed the need for retraining programs and AI taxes to avoid a crisis. He estimates this could push unemployment to 20% within one to five years. I'd be interested to see if you mm. think that that's conservative or on point. Um is this kind of looming disruption why the billionaires are building bunkers? Um, yes, actually. It's one of the reasons. Generally, it's what they do. But I know a lot of AI CEOs now have cancelled all public appearances, especially in the wake of Charlie Kirk and things like that. They think that that's going to be the next wave of anti-AI sentiment next year because next year is the year that AI models go from not being good enough, the dumb member of your team, and again, the people listening to this will be like, yeah, the AI is not good enough then overnight it becomes good enough. Mm. And then the job losses start, and we don't know where they end because you don't need to hire back if your company is more productive. If there's an economic shock, like a recession, and indications point to a recession in the next year or two, much easier to fire, but then you never rehire. Mm. And yet nobody in the mainstream finance press is pricing this in. He talks about how next year is the tipping point, where AI goes from being the dumb intern or the hallucinating chatbot to suddenly, overnight, being better than the median human at almost every economically valuable task. And the critical insight here, and this is the part that I think is freaking people out, is that the CEOs know that once that switch flips, once the model capabilities cross that dashed line on the graph where they exceed human reliability, the public sentiment is going to shift from cool tech to existential threat as fast as the Luddite riots will look like a tea party. And that's why they're disappearing. They're preemptively bunkering down because they know that the crisis Imad is talking about is not a glitch in the code, it's a glitch in the social contract. Now, I want to talk about the doomsday scenario, because honestly, a year ago, I would have laughed this off as Silicon Valley LARPing, but we need to look at the actions of Ilya Sutskever. If you're not familiar with Ilya, he's arguably the most important scientist in the history of modern AI, the guy who was the chief scientist at OpenAI, the guy who basically saw the scaling laws before anyone else. He left OpenAI to start Safe Super Intelligence Inc., which is already valued at billions of dollars. But if you look at the reporting surrounding his departure, it gets genuinely weird. There are sources, credible sources, inside the labs claiming that Ilya and a core group of researchers believe that the arrival of AGI will not just be a product launch like the iPhone, they believe it'll be a rapture-style event. And I mean fundamentally. Think about the psychology required for a scientist to use the word rapture to describe a software update. It implies a complete, irreversible break in the continuity of human history. And then you have this quote attributed to a researcher, saying, we're definitely going to build a bunker before we release AGI. Now, I mean, come on. If the people writing the code are saying they need to reinforce concrete shelter before they hit run on the final training run, should we maybe be a little more concerned? 
And this is not just Ilya. If you look at this book by Douglas Rushkoff, Survival of the Richest, he documents this exact phenomenon, where he was invited to speak to these ultra-wealthy tech billionaires, and he thought he wanted to talk about the future of digital innovation, but, and this is the wild part, they just wanted to ask him about how to maintain control over their security forces after the event. They're fundamentally obsessed with the event, which is their shorthand for the societal collapse that they believe is inevitable. Rushkoff argues that their entire business model is about externalizing the damage, dumping the social cost onto you and me, while using the profits to build a technological cocoon to escape the consequences. And if you look at Sam Altman, the face of OpenAI, he's been on the record for years talking about his doomsday prep. I mean, in an interview with The New Yorker way back in the day, he literally listed his prep stash. Guns, gold, potassium iodide, antibiotics, batteries, water, and hard mass from the Israeli Defense Force. He joked about having a patch of land in Big Sur to fly to, and sure, maybe that's just a quirky hobby, but when you combine that with Mark Zuckerberg buying a 1,400-acre compound in Kauai and building a 5,000-square-foot underground shelter with its own energy and food supplies, it starts to look less like a hobby and more like an exit strategy. These guys have access to better data than we do. They can see the exponential curves of their own models before they release them to the public, and their personal capital allocation suggests they're betting on chaos. But, and I think this is the most immediate point, the reason they're disappearing now in 2025 is not just because of some far-off AGI risk, it's because the backlash is already here and it's vastly more aggressive than anyone expected. I went digging through X, Twitter, and Reddit to look at the sentiment analysis on recent AI campaigns, and honestly, the toxicity is off the charts. It used to be that people were skeptical, but now there's a visceral, genuine hatred bubbling up from the general public. Look at these tweets I pulled up. You have people replying to generic AI announcements with FAI, this is stealing, you're destroying the planet. There was this Coca-Cola ad that was AI generated and the comments section was a war zone. People were not just criticizing the aesthetics, they were attacking the moral foundation of the company for using it. You have people pointing out the energy usage. Why is my electricity bill going up so you can generate a picture of a cat? And you have this growing narrative that AI is slop, that it's pollution for the internet. And this is dangerous for the CEOs because when you have a technology that's tripling energy consumption, driving up hardware costs, and simultaneously threatening jobs, you create a perfect storm for populist rage. And this rage is fundamentally different from previous tech backlashes. When Uber came out, taxi drivers were mad, but the average consumer loved cheap rides. With AI, the average consumer is seeing their internet feed filled with garbage, they're seeing scam bots everywhere, and they're hearing that their job is next. There was this McDonald's campaign where the studio bragged about using AI to refine the prompts, and the internet just tore them apart. The sarcasm, the vitriol, it's palpable. People are saying, oh great, you save money on artists so you could feed us soulless content. And the danger here, the reason Imodmo stock is saying these CEOs are hiding, is because this online rage rarely stays online forever. We've already seen incidents with other billionaires, we've seen how polarized society is. If you're the face of the technology that just laid off 10,000 workers in a specific sector, you're effectively painting a target on your back. The AI safety discourse used to be about preventing a rogue terminator, now the safety concern for these CEOs is protecting themselves from the people they're disrupting. So let's look at the economic reality that's driving this fear. Because if you think the anger is bad now, just wait until the job displacement data actually hits the mainstream. I pulled up this chart from a recent Goldman Sachs report. And if you look at the dashed line representing administrative and legal support jobs, it's nosediving. The Senate report that just came out suggests AI and automation could eliminate nearly 100 million jobs in the US over the next decade. 100 million. I mean, just pause and think about the magnitude of that number. That's not a recession, that's a fundamental restructuring of civilization. And I dug into the sector-specific data, and it's terrifying. We're seeing contractions in entry-level coding, translation, copywriting, and customer support. These used to be the ladder jobs, the jobs where you started, learned the ropes, and moved up. If those rungs of the ladder are sawed off by a model that costs 0.05 per 1,000 tokens, how does anyone start a career? And here's where the disconnect happens. The economists, and you see this in the Goldman report, they always say, oh, historically, technology creates more jobs than it destroys. They say the impact will be modest and temporary. 
But, and this is the part where I think they're dead wrong this time, this time is fundamentally different because we're not automating muscle, we're automating cognition. We're automating the very thing that makes human labor valuable in a knowledge economy. Imad Mostak breaks this down perfectly. He says every CEO of a knowledge company is going to ask the same question next year. Do I need this human who brings liabilities, health insurance costs, and the emotional variance? Or can I hire an AI agent that works 24-7 for pennies? The answer, from a purely capitalist perspective, is obvious. And when you have Dario Amode, the CEO of Anthropic, a guy who's explicitly trying to be the safe AI option, admitting on camera that he's worried about the distribution of the pie, you know it's bad. He's saying, yeah, the pie gets bigger, but it might get concentrated in a much smaller number of hands. That's corporate speak for oligarchy. I mean, look at the specific examples Dario lists. Document review, routine analysis, scheduling, organizing. He calls these the horseworks of entry-level white-collar labor. If those jobs vanish, you have a massive demographic of educated, indebted young people with no economic utility. That's a recipe for revolution. History tells us that when you have a surplus of elites, educated people with no path to power or wealth, societies become incredibly unstable. And the AI CEOs know this. They're not stupid. They run the simulations. They know that if unemployment spikes to 20% in the white-collar sector, the political pressure to ban AI or tax it into oblivion will be immense. So their strategy right now is to build the tech as fast as possible, secure the government contracts to make themselves too big to fail, and physically hide from the public public fallout until the transition is over. It's a race against time, and right now they're winning the tech race but losing the PR war. So fundamentally, where does this leave us? We're staring down the barrel of a transition that's going to be more disruptive than the Industrial Revolution, but it's happening in years, not decades. The government is asleep at the wheel. They're still holding hearings about bias while the labs are building gods and the billionaires are pouring concrete in Hawaii. It's a genuinely precarious situation. I think we need to stop looking at AI as just a tool and start looking at it as a geopolitical force that's going to rewrite the social contract. If we don't figure out how to redistribute the massive wealth this technology is going to generate, and I mean really figure it out, not just talk about it, we're heading for a world where the bunkers aren't just for paranoia, they're a necessity. And honestly, the fact that the people building the future are the ones most afraid of living in it, that should tell you everything you need to know. I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Are the bunkers an overreaction? Or are these guys seeing a signal in the noise that the rest of us are missing? Because from where I'm sitting, looking at the charts, looking at the sentiment, and looking at the speed of these model improvements, 2026 is looking like it is going to be a very, very wild ride.